What's going on everybody? And in this week's lesson, we are gonna dig in to the major scale and hopefully make new connections, realize some new patterns that will help you open up your fretboard a little bit. Several years ago, I discovered a player named Tom Quayle. He's a fusion jazz player, phenomenal. Um, I really dig his style. But one of the things that I discovered through watching him play and listening to some of his lessons is he talks about scale patterns and putting them in the one octave patterns, right? So I don't know if this is I don't think this is his concept, right? But I wanna give the credit to him because this is where I got it from and I wanna share it with all of you. So the, the thing is, we all know our major scale. If I asked some of you to play me a major scale, maybe some of you would know this one. Right? Maybe some of you know, the shredders out there know the, like the three string, three note per string. Right? And that is how you understand a major scale, right? So not even getting into you should know your scales horizontally, you can break those larger three, two, three, four octave scale runs really down to one octave patterns. And those patterns run into each other. They repeat like a code, which is pretty cool. So let's just check out what I'm talking about. We're gonna play in C major, good old C major. And I'm only doing that because it puts us in a position on the fretboard that I can get all three patterns in the one octave, okay? So I'm in standard tuning. If anybody wants the tabs for anything they see going across the screen, you could find that link in the description is in the description below, okay? So where do we start, right? C major scale. There's only three ways to play it, okay? So if I start with my first finger, we'll call that number one, right? Why not? So if I put my first finger on C, which happens to be the eighth fret of the low string, we're gonna play one octave, and I get this scale pattern, and this happens to be the three note per string scale pattern. Right? That's eight, 10, 12, eight, 10, 12, nine, 12. So what we wanna do with this is quickly remove the fret numbers and learn the scale pattern or the finger pattern, right? I personally play these three note per strings when they're whole steps apart, eight to 10, 10 to 12. I play those with my one, two, and four fingers. It's just more comfortable for my hand. Some, a lot of people play with the third finger and that's fine, right? There's no right or wrong way. So that's the first scale pattern. Start with my first finger. I'm clearly playing in front of my note. I can't play anything behind. And here's my pattern, right? And then notice I end on my middle finger and I can go backwards. Right? It's extremely important to understand that what finger you're starting going up and what finger you're coming down on, right? You should learn your scales both ascending and descending especially for this kind of concept, okay? Now, if I'm on my middle finger for that note, now I cannot physically play what I just played. I have to play it differently, and that looks like this. Same exact notes, right? If this was transcribed on sheet music, they would be completely identical, okay? So that is eight, 10, or two, four with my left hand, seven, eight, 10, one, two, four with my fingers, and then seven, nine, ten, right? One, three, four with my fingers. Okay, there you go, simple. Now again, some of you might know, know this. Maybe you know two of these, maybe you know one of them, okay? Here's number three. Now, we're gonna play this one with our pinky. You can play it with your ring finger depending on where you are on the fretboard, but I would keep it here on my pinky, right? So it's eight, next string, seven, a five, seven, eight, or one, three, four. And then we have whole steps, five, seven, nine, five. An extra string on that one. Okay? So those are the only three ways you can play a major scale on the guitar. And anytime you start connecting, say like this, a big three octave scale, well, you're just combining those patterns together. So let's look at that really fast, okay? Now, one thing we do have to keep in mind is the tuning of the instrument, right? From the third string to the second string, this interval is a major third, different from all the other ones. 
So that's why all of our scale patterns have to shift up by one fret once you cross the B string going this way, okay? So for example, I'll show you what I mean. This note is C, fifth fret G string. If I play number one, right, this pattern, right? If I play that here, that sounds really bad, okay? And that's because of the tuning of the instrument. Those two strings have to be up one fret. Right, everything's just shifted up one, okay? Don't let that confuse you, just be aware of it. It's not changing the patterns, it's not creating six more patterns based on those string sets. It's the same pattern, it's just slightly altered because of the tuning. That'll, it helps me, hopefully that helps you, okay? So now, let's dig into this. If I start on number one, look what note I end up on, my middle finger. Now, we have three patterns, I can play the C major pattern that starts with my middle finger. There you go, right? So number one goes into number two. And technically I'm on my root note here with my pinky, and if you have your finger, those patterns memorized already, then you would see that this is the start of number three. Let's do that with number two. I land on my pinky, so now I can play this pattern, number three, we labeled it. And hopefully you can see, my right, pinky, one, three, four, one, two, four, cross string. That's the same exact thing as Okay, so now let's pick up right there. We just played number three. We end up on our first finger. And there you go. I go right into number one. Okay, so this is why it's important to understand what finger you start with ascending and what finger you start with descending. This way if I go well, now I know I'm on my middle finger and I want to go down. Now I'm on my first finger. And now if there was more strings, technically that's where I would be. I was almost tempted to break out the seven string because then you can see that extra string allows us to get all three patterns together, but I didn't. <laughs> cool. So that is a phenomenal way to kind of explore your fretboard and the amazing thing is that you can take that and put it to every single scale or mode that you know. Dorian, same thing. Lydian, same thing. Melodic minor, same thing. Phrygian dominant, same exact thing. There are three patterns for every one of those. You like your pentatonic scale? Maybe we'll do one for the pentatonic scale. It has less notes, so technically you only have two patterns instead of three, okay? A minor or A minor. And when you break down those five pentatonic boxes, you realize it's just two into one or one into two every single time in those boxes, okay? That was really eye-opening for me and it helps navigate fretboards and especially playing over chords or in keys or chords that you are not familiar with, right? Flat keys. A flat, D flat, E flat, not strong in my vocabulary. Why? Because I play an instrument that plays in sharp keys. So I'm just not used to it, right? So this way I can come in and like, oh look, here's B flat. Right? I don't, off the top of my head, oh, I don't know the notes of B flat, but I know my scale pattern, so I can play, okay? And there you go. Those are the ways you can view your major scale patterns. There are lots of other kind of things that you can put over this. Um, down in the description below, you can find a link for all the tabs. And as always, let me know what you come up with. So until then, I'll see you next time. Thanks a lot.